Hello everybody, I'm Barry. And I'm Steve. And today, we're going to be talking about Pokemon Quest for the Nintendo Switch. Now for those of you that don't know, Pokemon Quest is a free, downloadable title on the Nintendo Switch. It's available right now. And this will also be available for mobile, I believe, later this month, if not July. And uh, the story is, is you are on this island, and you've got to explore the island, and you get a team of Pokemon, up to three, um, to explore each section of the island for you. Uh, one interesting thing about the aesthetics of this game is everything is cubed, very much like Minecraft. And uh, I kind of like it. It, it kind of gives it its own appeal, its own look. It's not trying to be Pokemon Hardcore RPG. Uh, so if you're thinking it is, it's not. And uh, because this is a mobile title and because it's free, it's what many people call freemium. Uh, you can play the game 100% free and not drop a dime, or you can spend $30 on this title and be able to play it pretty much unlimited. I mean, you still have a little bit of restrictions, um, but you, you, you gain everything at an accelerated pace. You get twice the experience, uh, and it, it turns it into a much different game. Um, Steve, what are your thoughts? Yeah, um, I'm actually liking the game more than I thought I would, and and the more time that I spend with it, the more time I the more I like it, um, and I really don't know why. To be completely honest with you, I don't know why I like it because I really shouldn't. Um, I don't like the whole freemium like mindset. I don't like how I can only play a little bit um, without really either waiting or getting sucked in and paying money, um, which I haven't done yet. Um, I don't like how I can't really control the Pokemon. I don't like how I don't have full like control over like a like an actual Pokemon game. But at the same time, I think a lot of those reasons are the same reasons why I like it, oddly enough. Um, because it's different. Because I can only play it in short amounts of time. And so I've got like five, ten minutes here. I can throw in time. And you know what? I, I don't have much time to play anymore. It's okay because I can't play anymore right now. Anyhow, I gotta wait for you know more more plays or whatever to to rack up. And so um, it it really is a mobile title in a lot of different ways. It's it's that pick up and get my quick fix um, <laughs> while I can, and then I'll move on and do something else, and then I'll come back to it later. And um, yeah, I think that's that's pretty much um, my experience with it. It's it's a lot more enjoyable than I thought it would be, and every time I play it, I'm enjoying it more and more which I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same way. I downloaded it as a curiosity. I'm like, let me try it out. And uh, I did get addicted in a sense. Like, I, I got that, that rush of, oh, this is... And I, well, the funny thing is I started it. I downloaded it right after the it was announced. But I didn't start it till around midnight or so. I was lying in bed. I'm like, well, I'm just going to give this a quick shot. Next thing I know, by the time I ran out of battery charges, because in the tutorial, they kind of refill it for a while, mm -hmm. it was 3 o'clock in the morning. And I was like, oh my god, I played this game till 3 o'clock <laughs> in the morning, this freemium game. And and I did play it, you know, most days. I haven't played it for the past few days. And uh, I did enjoy it, and I do enjoy it, and I do plan to continue, uh, especially in smaller bursts. Uh, there was a time, that first few days, that I was debating dropping the $30. Now, there were some... Uh, negatives to that and the main the first negative was uh, my wife started playing it too because I said mm. why don't you give it a shot and she's debating you know she's going to be getting her own switch for Pokemon Let's Go Eevee and uh, but right now she's on my switch and I didn't know if this would be like the way it works but I'm fairly certain that if I spend the $30 on my account that logging in with her would she still get the bonuses of mm. the $30 and it's something I thought about and uh, if she didn't, then it would be a bigger, you know, it would be less of a draw to do it. But the other thing is, if she, you know, with her getting her own Switch, uh, if you know, you buy a game for sixty bucks or even thirty dollars, and it's a physical copy, if you want to lend it to your friend or your spouse, uh, you could just do it, and they have the whole game. And the whole point of this is, for thirty dollars, you're really opening up the game. You're getting the game for, you know, for the thirty dollars. And in this case, you would have to buy it twice, and I'm not a fan of that. And I didn't. I didn't spend the thirty dollars. I haven't, and I. I definitely at this point I'm not. Now, if they did some kind of like special sale where it was like five bucks for the thirty dollars worth of content, I would probably drop five bucks on it. But I'm not. 
Um, the talk about non-controlling. Um, for those of you that don't know, you actually don't control your Pokemon in this. You, the Pokemon <laughs> will move automatically from wave to wave of enemies. All you can control is one of two moves that they can do, and you can do a runaway whistle. And the runaway whistle, it works, but only some of the time. Sometimes yeah. you hit it and they don't even move anywhere, or they're against the wall and they just turn around and they just can't. They yeah. just stand still. Honestly, I forget about it half the time. No, more oh, than half the time. Oh. Most of the time, I forget about it because it's never worked when I tried it. So I just forget it's there. <laughs> um, you know what I use it for, and this is a little bit of strategy. If your Pokemon gets a status ailment, and it's between waves, you can spam that as much mm. as you can to hold them off from getting to the next wave to let that status effect okay. wear off a little bit. And and for that, I've done it. Or if like I had a Pokemon, you know, knocked out. Just to like in between waves, uh, try to okay. delay to get. get I didn't really up. try it in between wa waves. That makes more sense. So yeah, um, and I've done it done it during waves too. There are certain Pokemon, um, like bosses, that will have a move where all they'll do is like a, an AOE attack, mm -hmm. and like I'll be able to get my attacks in and hit the runaway so that they back out before the AOE attack, and it works some of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Sometime they're just like, oh, I'm just gonna still stand here. I'm gonna run into a wall right next to the enemy, and they still die. Um, I wish you had more control. I do. Uh, and I did notice there was an auto button early on. And I'm like, ooh, auto button. This is even easier. And I, I hit it. And I'm like, oh, this is great. The game's playing for me. Yeah. Uh, and then I realized I started dying. Yeah. I started dying. And I'm like, why did I die like four times or, 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 or four to five times on this boss? I died. I'm like, why? And I tried playing it with myself and I was won it every time. Yeah. So the auto is there. But unless you're overpowered and you just want to farm some, you know, materials, yeah. uh, don't use it. <laughs> don't use it. Yeah, I found the same thing. I I played the first couple rounds and was playing the whole time, and then I saw the auto. I was like, well, let's try it out, and it won because it was the first several levels, and uh, and so I let it go for a while. I think it was probably near the end of the worlds two and three when I started losing and, and found the same thing as you is like when I go in there and manually play them and manually hit the, the moves and everything, then I started winning. Um, but I would get destroyed every time when I did it auto, but it was great for farming though. Like there was a couple times where I, in our podcast, I, I kind of referred to the game as Pokemon set it and forget it because when you do that, it's just like, I hit the auto button. I set it to the side, let it farm, do my thing, do its little thing. And then I'll go and do something else. I'll come back to it. Um, but yeah, once you get past um, worlds two and three, or even in, near the ends of worlds two and three, that doesn't work anymore. Yeah, it's unfortunate. And uh, I also noticed the difficulty will spike. Yeah. And when the difficulty spikes in this typical mobile game, it spikes to the point that it makes you say, in order to continue, you need to drop some money. And I'm at the point where I'm in six, seven, uh, eight, or, or seven, eight, nine, mm -hmm. seven, eight, nine, ten, seven, eight, nine, ten, the last four levels. And I'm able to do stuff in World 7 and 8, and I can't even do anything in 9 and 10 because I'm not strong enough. And the only way to get stronger is to farm, which I've been doing over and over again, wanting my XP go up a little bit. Uh, getting more Pokemon to sacrifice for training, which is something <laughs> I can most certainly do. Um, but it's like, do I really want to sacrifice all of them? Because I'm trying to collect them all because right. that's Pokemon. Yep. And then even if I have two of the two of the same, they're not always the same. They have different move sets. So which one do I really want to get rid of? Yeah. And uh, it's become a little tough. And the other thing is, each world has a bonus element. And if you have a Pokemon of that bonus element, you get bonus attack points. Now I don't know if that uh, works for multiple. Like uh, world two, I think is fire. And mm -hmm. if you have two fire or three fire, if it if it increases. And if the, if it does, then that's great. But I've only had one at a time, and that's allowed me. And worlds uh, eight and nine, or seven and eight, I'm sorry, are uh, ground and rock. Mm -hmm. And I have a Rhyhorn in my party, so I'm like, oh, cool, I get the bonuses. And that's why I can't touch nine and ten right now because I don't have those, and I don't really feel like leveling something up. Yeah. Again, and and there there is some easy stuff. So if you do want, like, you get like your favorite Pokemon at level one. Every time you clear a world, you get a totem that you put in your garden, you just, there's decorations you can get, and this, the, the effect is that it's easier to level up for lower levels to get them higher. And that's great. Um, but it only goes so far. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's still a lot of work, and it still takes batteries, and batteries take 30 minutes to recharge. So uh, 
you're really either going to spend a lot of time or a lot of money on this game <laughs> to, to play it. Right. And that depends on how patient you are. You have to have patience to play this game for free. And like right now at this point, I'm spending you know two you know five five uh, battery charges, which is two and a half hours, to get maybe a level on each of my Pokemon. Yeah. So and I need to get like another ten levels to be able to go to the next stages, uh, because it jumps too. Like like it's like oh you need five hundred total power and then the next one you need 550 like in the early levels and in the later levels it's like you need 8100 for this level and then you need 9500 for the next and you're like oh my god that's right. 1400 more attack yeah like that's insanity yeah 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 i feel like it's like i played um very familiar with like um clash of clans or clash royale and it's very similar to that sort of thing too like you you feel like you make a lot of progress for free and you're like, this is awesome. And then you, all of a sudden you hit that point where you're like, oh, I really don't want to have to spend real money on this. But I know that it's either spend two weeks farming and maybe eventually get to where I need to be. Or I drop five bucks and buy that first expansion pack and maybe I can be you know, where I need to be. Or should I just drop the whole 30 and get them all and, uh, and get the whole thing? And it, it becomes very tempting and... Yeah, I haven't gotten to that point yet. I'm I'm a little behind you, but I'm I'm dreading that day because I know it's coming. Like even before you said it, I knew it was going to happen eventually. Like where they're going to. It, it yeah. took me several days to go through four, five, and six, and yeah. that was that was me playing virtually every two and a half hours, um, trying to like squeeze it. Like like if I had five minutes next to my like mm -hmm. my energy, and I had to go out somewhere, I'm like, no, I'm holding off yeah. until I get that tick doing that tick and then running out yeah um and it was it's stressful uh and so let, let's explain uh your pokemon that you have there's there's different ways to level them up in addition to actual levels which does increase their attack and their mm -hmm. hp <clears throat> there's also uh like mid metals you can give them yep and uh they increase either the attack and the, the hp and they also come in different flavors, the generic, which has no benefits, the bronze, which has one extra bonus, the silver, which has two, and the gold, which has three. These are all random, <clears throat> so it's very much an MMO-style mm -hmm. loot system, and uh, it's inconsistent. <laughs> and there are times where you know you'll do a, a battle, and you'll get, you know, I'll get like a a, a plain regular you know, generic attack, and then I'll get a gold attack, and I'm like, oh, man. And the plain generic attack is, like, 350 with nothing, and the gold attack is, like, 211 yep. from the same arena. And I'm like, why should... Those things should be closer. Right. Even if the gold was 320 or something, they should still be closer. There's yeah. no reason. Uh, so I don't know if, far, like, if the level you farm determines it or what. Um, I've had it all over the board. Uh, it's a negative in my opinion, but that's what keeps you going. Yep. You know, that little extra, Ooh, is this one going to be good? No. Until that like a hundredth time where, Oh my God, it is good. I got something good. Right. Right. Yeah. That, that was, I, I'm glad to hear that that was, that's happening to you in a way, just cause I'm, I feel comforted because <laughs> I was getting frustrated by it as well. I was like, man, like this, this silver one that I got is a whole lot worse than the regular plain one. Like, this is awful. And um, and then sometimes I'd get nothing at all. I'd play the same level again and get something awesome. And then I'd play it again and get nothing at all. Or, it, yeah, it's just kind of completely random, as you were saying. And and that does keep you coming back for more, but it also makes it frustrating um, at times as well when you just you think that, like, there's no logic a lot of times to it. It's like there's no A plus B equals C. Sometimes it equals C, and sometimes it equals A again. Now, there is another thing um, that they have is there's a meter in the top left corner. For every successful expedition you have, you fill this meter. And when it fills up, the next expedition you go on is guaranteed to get a gold medal. That doesn't mean you're going to get a gold high medal, but you're guaranteed to get a gold medal. Uh, at the end and you can still get gold regularly but this is at least a guarantee and obviously when you get it that meter disappears um it's a nice little bonus i'm glad it's in there but it's still it doesn't guarantee it's going to be a good metal I, now i was say i was confused by that in the beginning because i at least maybe i read it wrong but i thought it's like oh it is show me to the way to the next one 
and I thought I was supposed to be looking somewhere on the map. Okay, which where where is this gold one? I didn't know it was an automatic the next one you yeah. played. And so I was confused by that one for a while. I was like, what does this even do? And <laughs> like, I'm looking for all over the map. Like, am I missing <clears throat> something? What's going on here? Now, in order, uh, just when you drop money, you get these these tokens. And you get 50 a day, real, real world day, like 22 hours. You get 50 for free every single day. Uh, and if you spend money on the, the pack, you do get furniture uh, that will increase the amount of free ones you get every day. I think it maxes at 180, which allows you to do a lot more. Mm -hmm. um, now, what you can do with this is you can spend it on furniture, furniture for your camp. Each thing will give you better materials, will get you better uh, Pokemon, will get you, you know, better, better chances of getting rare stuff. Um, it's all there and it's all minute minute percentages but it's it's placebos oh i'm gonna do better because i have this uh and in addition to that you can also purchase two more things one of them is a pokemon box you can start by only holding 20 you want to catch all 151 well guess what you're gonna have to pay 50 coins every single time you want to expand by 20. the other one is for your medals you get these great metals, this great loot system, but you can only hold 20 again. So again, another 50 coins will be having to go there. So you have to decide, do you want to expand your metal capacity, your Pokemon capacity, or save for um, furniture, for your for furnishings, I should say, for your, your apartment mm -hmm. and your, your, your base. Have you uh, spent any of those currency on anything I've yet? I've not <laughs> spent anything at all yet. Uh, I, I've <laughs> kept them all thinking... At some point, I'll have to, but right now, I'm totally just saving up <laughs> thinking, what do I spend it on? Um, and I probably will end up spending it on uh, the the bank or whatever for my Pokemon and the uh, and the Power Stones and everything, because I don't really care about as much. I know they, they help a little bit, like the furnishings and all the decorations and stuff, but um, I think, in my, at least as of now, I feel like I would probably... It benefit me more to to be able to have more space for even, more, more. Even that Pokemon. sweet Mewtwo arch, which allows your battery to have six charges instead of five, so you can yes, you can play a little more often. <laughs> <laughs> because honestly, it's probably actually better if I only have fives. <laughs> they don't get sucked in as much. But uh, no, yes, I, I, who knows? Who knows what right now? And actually, it's a hard. It's really hard for me to actually want to spend it because I'm like hoarding it. Like I'm naturally more of a spend, uh, saver in general, like in actual money, um, and so I, this is totally translating over to my in-game persona as well. <laughs> I am I am a saver in the game. I'm not going to spend it until I really have to. So I'm recycling like every power stone that I can until I save that one little last spot until I have to cash it in to get another. See, uh, I I did uh, that too uh, <laughs> until I again had to expand. Uh, because, you know, I suddenly I realized I didn't have enough room if I wanted a medal in each of my spots for my team. And I'm like, because I, I need, I don't know, to me, that you needed it to, yeah. to move on. So I had to. Um, but as you mentioned, uh, if you do have some medals uh, you don't want, you just want to get rid of them, you need the space, you can recycle them. And they turn into ingredients. Ingredients are also farmed when you do these missions. And what do ingredients do? You have a pot in your camp, uh, which is upgradable. As you go through the game, again, the same thing, generic, uh, bronze, silver, and then gold. Uh, and you use these ingredients to cook stew. And cooking stew takes real-world turns of you know going on expeditions, two, three, four, five, etc. And uh, when the stew is done, it will attract a Pokemon, or two if you're really lucky. And this Pokemon will guarantee join you. Uh, so you can there's 18 different recipes, and you can choose what you want to cook, or you could just let potluck you know deem what you get and the difference between the pots is the level of pokemon it will attract so if you use the generic it's like up to like 15 if you use silver it's like up to or bronze it's up to like 30 and if it's the silver it's up to like 60 and then the gold i haven't gotten yet so i'm assuming it's you know up to, to 100 um but there's some stipulations one the amount of ingredients you need goes up so you put five ingredients in and, and each of those in the generic is times three. So if you want five red berries, it's really 15. But the bronze, it's five each, I think. And then the silver, it's like 10 each. Um, so you have to make sure you have enough. And if you 
trying to really farm, uh, it's going to take a lot of ingredients. And if you do purchase the 30 dollars, you actually get three more pots. So you can cook four stews at a time, uh, which is definitely going to deplete your uh, ingredients. Um, so you have to choose wisely. Um, now, another thing to this is that the stews will only attract base level Pokemon. So I saw like one person got like a 92 Charmander. And I have no idea what happens if they level to 93. Do they automatically level to Charmeleon? Or are they stuck a Charmander forever? Can they never become a Charizard? Uh, so I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. But I do know that, that you have an Everstone in this game. So if you do want a Pikachu and you never want it to turn into a Raichu, you could turn on that Everstone on that, and that po- uh, Pikachu will never evolve. Exactly what um, I did. <laughs> uh, I did, I did Char- uh, Charmander, and I have a Charizard now. Nice. But uh, they also do level automatically at the levels they did in game so like char my char uh, my charmander did a charmeleon at 16 and then at 36 went to uh, charizard and any ones that require stones uh, or trading will still at whatever level will automatically now eevee i'm not sure what happens i think it might be random um i'm sure i could look it up but or you could look it up if you're really concerned but uh, it's nice that the evolutions are there and and it, it is only the 151 original mm-hmm. but there are shinies you can get shiny Pokemon, uh, just just in the wild. So, and there is no difference; they're just different color. So, yeah. if you want a green Onyx, you can get a green Onyx if you happen to get lucky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think uh, what I, kind of what I've been experiencing. I think this is kind of uh, another. You know, they've done this several times, but another entry point to the Pokemon franchise. Um, This is a great way for other people who are not super familiar with what goes on and and even the whole, like, um, you know, rock, paper, scissors, like how it all works out and everything like that. You learn that as you go. And and that's something that I've I've never really, like, I know it's there. And I know, like, I, I play into it as I'm forming my team and stuff in regular uh, Pokemon games, but I don't pay attention to it as much, and because I know some people have like separate teams for different things and all that, I've never really taken that much time and effort into any of the Pokemon games I played. But I know some people do. Um, this is kind of one of those games that kind of introduces you to that sort of thing, how each of the Pokemon function, <laughs> the, how they evolve, and that sort of thing. And so I think for that point alone, I think it's a great idea for them to have something like this that kind of inter- you know helps people enter into the Pokemon uh, world. Um, the biggest thing that I think it, it's just, it seems, I don't know. I think <laughs> it seems so weird that it's in this Q world. I still can't get over that. I don't know. Like, I feel like it's just like, we have this cool idea. We don't know what to do. Let's slap Pokemon on it. Yeah, that works. And it kind of fits all the functions of this game and everything. I just, it just seems weird. Um, I don't I like know. It though. I, it's fun. It just, it just seems weird. So I don't know if it's necessarily a knock on the game. It, I just can't get over it. <laughs> yeah. There's also other uh, random elements. I don't know if you've encountered, but uh, sometimes a Chansey will appear. Oh, I haven't and, seen uh, And uh, will appear in a wave, and after a certain amount of time will run away and disappear. Hmm. Uh, so I've never actually killed it. You know, I've, I've, I've done really close, but I don't know. I'm assuming you got a rare medal for doing it or something like that. But it's all, always random. And another random thing, each time you do a stage, it looks, it appears to be virtually the same. Like sometimes the waves of enemies will be slightly different, mm-hmm. uh, you know, just slightly different families, but it's always the same boss. Except for the one I've been farming lately, which is, I think, 8-5? Or 8-5 or 8-4, uh, where the boss is a Kangaskhan. And out of every single time I've farmed this thing, out of probably a good 40 times, it's been Kangaskhan. Except once it was an Aerodactyl. Once, and random, it was Aerodactyl. Oh. I'm like, oh my god, why is there an Aerodactyl here? Did I pick the wrong one? <laughs> but I didn't. Um, it was really weird, and it threw me off. Yeah. So I don't know if there's other hidden ones, because another factor, which we didn't say, is in addition to the every 22 hours that you get um, – uh, the 50 coins also a pokemon that, that you've encountered in the wild will come to your camp so you got a free pokemon right. every 22 hours I, I just encountered one actually i was looking down and i was like oh hey there's a moth there like, you go I, I didn't realize he was there <laughs> um so i don't know if maybe that factor in how you you can get these randomly uh, as well but it is another thing to the game and it's another it's it's like a breadcrumb yeah it's like here's another little <laughs> taste 
Yeah. Just please keep playing me. Yeah. Keep please giving me money. That's, but it's that's smart. exactly what it is. It's yeah. it's <laughs> it's that little bit. She's like, ah, keep coming back a little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Eventually, <laughs> we're gonna get you to drop real money. But keep coming back a little more, a little more. <laughs> yeah, and you know what? For what it is, in my opinion, I think it's definitely worth trying out. I mean, yeah. It's free. Totally. Yeah, there's really no harm. Yep. Um, it's a great entry point for people who want to get more into the Pokemon world. And it's not unusual for this franchise. There's been a lot of Pokemon spinoffs and unique uh, things. Pokemon Rumble was a really unique uh, one. And, you know, obviously Pokemon Mystery Dungeon. And then you have, like, Pokemon Dash and and Shuffle and Battle Trozy and regular Trozy and Puzzle Challenge. There's a ton of Pokemon spinoffs. And it's not even the first Pokemon spinoff to hit mobile. Nope. Uh, you know, Shuffle's been there. And, and, uh, and so... And uh, obviously Pokemon Go. Uh, so it's really up the alley for the franchise. And I'm glad they did it. I'm sad that they're not doing a physical, at least not yet. Pokemon Rumble World was a freemium game for the Wii U that, or for the 3DS that did get a physical copy. So uh, maybe in the future we'll have a physical one for the shells. But uh, until then, uh, Steve... What are your final thoughts on this game? Yeah, I think yeah, I think you pretty much summar- summarized it there, uh, Barry. I, I think it's it's something that, you know, why not try it out? Um, it's free. Download it. Um, it doesn't take up very much space on your on your Switch either. And uh, and check it out. If you hate it, that's okay. Delete it. Um, there's really nothing to lose except for maybe a little time. And uh, and if you do get sucked in, maybe maybe five ten. Thirty dollars if, if you get sucked in. But uh, but um, that's that's about it. So. Um, yeah, just just go check it out. Especially, yeah, if you're a big Pokemon fan, go check it out. If you never even thought about Pokemon, or maybe you kind of like, eh, I don't really know. Go check it out. Yeah, I agree. And uh, you know that is available. Like I said, right now you could you could literally right from this video you can go to your eShop uh, and download that. And we'd love to hear what you think. So let us know if you've played it. If you're thinking about playing it, uh, let us know in the comments below. Uh, and remember to please go to nintendofuse.com for other videos like this, other game chats, other reviews, uh, as well as industry talks, podcasts, other playthrough videos. We've got a ton of content, and uh, this video should be going live during E3, and during E3 we're going to have a ton of content, so please, please follow us. We're going to have recaps for all the news going out. We're going to have live reactions to the actual E3 Nintendo Direct from Nintendo, as well as Game Chats, Industry Talks, and a bunch of other coverage. Uh, So please, please check us out, NintendoFuse.com and our YouTube channel. Subscribe, hit that bell, and uh, we promise you'll keep getting some great exclusive content. Steve, thank you so much for joining today. No problem. And uh, for all you out there, thank you for watching. And until next time, we'll see you around. See ya. 